welcome back to another episode of Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up this week, I've got something a little bit different. I uh, was reached out to by a couple of the other restorers about a challenge that's going out this month called the Paint It Pink Challenge. Uh, it's meant to give awareness and uh, hopefully raise a little money for research for breast cancer. For me, this is a, kind of a personal challenge as both my mom and my grandmother uh, were diagnosed with breast cancer and my grandmother lost her battle with breast cancer. And so um, as someone who has felt the impact of this personally, and I know that I'm not alone, I know that there are many, many other people whose lives have been completely ruined and um, families torn apart by this horrific disease. Um, this one was really personal to me. And so I decided to kind of follow what some of the other restorers are doing. And I want to go ahead and do a couple of special builds here. And the proceeds of these builds will go to benefit the Susan G. Komen Foundation and their motto, Race for the Cure. So what better way to start than with a couple of really nice race cars. So both the models that I've chosen for uh, this build, and you're getting the, the double bonus here. I know this is a longer video, but I'm going to do both cars together. Um, both of these are Lesney Matchbox models. Um, this one here is the Ford Mustang, and this is a kind of a unique Matchbox model because it has the steering in it. Um, so you got the little lever on the side where you could actually turn the front wheels. Um, I'm not going to show as much with these restorations just due to the time constraints. This is already going to be a longer video. And I really wanted to focus on uh, some of the finish work with this one because these, uh, these cars are going up for auction. And so the little details, uh, the little fine tuning at the end is really what makes the difference in them. So I wanted to spend a little more time on that part of the restoration and a little less on some of the nuts and bolts, the things you get to see every time. So um, the typical process for this is standard. You know, it's the same as we do anything else. I'm going to drill out the uh, flange of the rivet, and then we'll come back in with a, a smaller drill bit and drill and tap a hole to accept an M2 screw. For the little British racing car here, uh, I've got a model that's pretty torn up. It was missing quite a bit of the original paint. Um, process to take it apart is exactly the same. We'll drill and tap the post up on the front here. Um, this particular model I do not have any wheels for. I've ordered some replacement wheels from Recover Toy. They seem to be the uh, easiest way to get them, um, or the one that could, could ship the fastest. And since uh, I'm trying to get all of these done and posted for the October 12th uh, video day. Um, it was in kind of a crunch, and so uh, went ahead and ordered from them, and those wheels should be on the way. Um, so you can see the base here is not in bad shape. Um, the original wheel hubs actually look pretty decent, pretty good. And uh, these are definitely going to be customs, and so I might see what interesting things I can do with this interior piece because uh, and, and probably the, the driver as well um, it's been a while since I've done a custom and so I'm, I'm looking forward to having a little bit of fun uh, with this model in particular On this base, uh, since I do want to do a little custom work to it, um, I am going to need to remove these uh, wheel hubs and axles on this. The axles are not in too bad a shape. One's a little bent up, but uh, I think I should be able to, to straighten it. And the wheel hubs are actually in really good shape. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with those yet. I know I don't want to leave them yellow in a uh, in a paint it pink challenge um, so I know we'll definitely be painting the wheels not quite sure which direction I want to go with them yet but um, 
of course, the first step of all of this is just to get them, get them off um, so that we can get everything cleaned up. On this Mustang base here, I, I do want to try to keep intact this little steering mechanism. I think it's one of the, the cooler models that Lesney made. Um, I think it really increased the playability, play value of the cars. I know some guys aren't really a fan of them. They might try to take them out or close in the little hole in the door where they're in to do a, a, a custom on them. But I think it's something that makes this model really unique and really special. And so I definitely want to try to preserve it. Um, now I know I need to remove these wheels just so that I can do the restoration on the base and, and the rest of the car. Um, and so I'm going to remove this little piece of plastic here. I'm doing this very, very carefully because I don't, I don't want to drill into the plastic at all. I only want to drill the post. Um, so it doesn't take very much. These are barely held in there, but, uh, we're going to take this little piece of plastic out and then I'll do my standard method to remove the wheels and axles. To do the cleanup on this base, uh, I've got a really soft plastic bristle brush in my rotary tool here. And this is really just for cleanup. This base was really kind of dirty. It had some, uh, some little crusties and stuff way down in between some of those hard to reach areas. Uh, a little bit of oxidation and eventually I'll switch over to one of my brass wheels to kind of shine this. But uh, again, because this is a custom, I think I'm going to be painting and customizing this base. So I really just want to get everything cleaned off and prepared for that. So after I've gotten it all cleaned up, I'm going to switch over to one of these soft buffing wheels that I've got. I'm um, not using any compound on this uh, and really just trying to use just a little bit of that friction from the buffing wheel to bring a little bit of a shine and really prepare the surface on this um, for some, some paint. And so it's just a quick once over. Um, again, I haven't put any compound on it. I probably have a little bit of residual just in the wheel itself. But uh, again, this is just in preparation for our next step. As I said in the beginning of the video, I didn't want to show uh, a lot of the details on painting the cars and things like that that I've, I've covered extensively in some of my others, but I did want to show this. Um, this is the little driver out of the British racing car. Um, I've started out with just a base coat of a gloss pink for him. Again, this is the Painted Pink Challenge, so I wanted him to have a, a pink uniform, pink racing suit, and then I wanted to be able to come back in and accent it. And I wanted to show a few different methods, a few different uh, tools and, and things that you can try on your own. Uh, the first is just that black Sharpie. I know a lot of restorers that will use a black Sharpie to highlight, you know, a, a rag top or soft tops. Um, they might use a red Sharpie to color in, highlight the uh, taillights on a model, especially if you've got a a chromed base or um, a polished base with uh, taillights that are formed in as part of the base and you just want to show them off. Uh, Sharpie is a great way to add a little color. It's not, you know, they say it's permanent, but we all know it's not super permanent, can be taken off. And so uh, for this one, I thought like, you know what, I think that black helmet popping against the pink racing suit and the pink car would look pretty nice. And, uh, it's very easy, you know, it takes just a few minutes to, to kind of go over that. So pretty happy with uh, how that worked. Um, now we got to move on and try to get his face and his hands in his boots. So to get the flesh tones on him, I'm using one of these little oil brushers. These are made for painting uh, miniatures, wargaming miniatures, board gaming miniatures, 
um, or small model projects, but I really like them. They are, uh, they're an oil base paint, um, and they come with this fine little bristle brush uh, that's part of the the applicator or part of the, the cap that screws in there. And uh, they're very easy to use and the paint lasts a long time. Um, I mean, you use it the way I do, just highlighting, you know, face, hands, things like that. I don't use very much of this paint and it's uh, it's pretty affordable um, to get the, the paint, the applicator, everything in one. It's nice, simple, easy, all-in-one solution. And uh, I really like them. I've got a, a couple different colors on them. And as you can see, even some of these really small little areas in here, like in the gap of his neck between the bottom of the helmet and the top of his racing suit, that little bristle brush is fine enough to get down in there. So, and because it's oil-based, it takes a long time for it to dry. If I get uh, little areas where I bleed over or go a little too far, it's real easy for me to just wipe it off and... Uh, so I've had pretty good luck with with these uh, oil brusher uh, paints, and I don't don't use them very often, but they were definitely the right thing for this one. So I kind of wanted to uh, to show those off. You can see I'm just going to hit the ends of his hands right here again. Um, doesn't take very much, and at this size and this scale, you know, just adding a, a little different color really starts to make that pop starts to make that driver look a lot more alive, a lot more realistic. Um, and so we're just going to uh, finish this up real quick, and then I can jump over and show you what I've been doing with the car bodies. Uh, I didn't want to film all the painting of the cars, but I uh, definitely want to show you um, where I went with these. Um, a little different direction for the two cars, and there's a reason for that I'll get to in just a minute here. On the wheels for the uh, little British race car, I decided to go with uh, a black. I looked at a lot of historical photos of different race cars kind of from that period of time, and most all of them had a, a dark or a black wheel hub. And so to kind of be somewhat historically accurate, um, I wanted to keep these the same. So I've gone ahead with just a base coat in flat black in my airbrush and uh, stuck these wheels just on the end of a, a toothpick so I could easily hold them and paint them. The other thing I found when I started looking at the photos was a lot of the early tires on these race cars had a colored ring around the outside of the rubber, um, usually a red or a yellow, um, sometimes a white. And so uh, I decided with the black hubs, the, those would stand out really nice on the pink body color for the car and that I wanted to go ahead and spice it up a little bit more and add that stripe onto the hubs and so I'm actually using uh, one of the darker color pinks that I mixed up uh, while I was painting the car bodies this one ended up not being quite the right pink that I was looking for on the car but it works just perfect as a highlight color on the rims of these wheels so I'm going to go ahead and get all of these touched up and then set those aside to dry. So I've left you hanging long enough on the car. Um, I want to give you a little preview of the body here. Um, it's a, a lighter color pink. Uh, I put a lot, a lot of metallic flake in this. Um, and it's it's really turned out very nice. It's definitely what I was going for. Uh, a true pink in the painted pink. And believe it or not, pink is actually a pretty hard color 
to uh, to work with. It's hard to mix up. It's hard to change the tints. Uh, it always ends up sliding into that red or into the purple, um, and I didn't want to do that. I am taking this casting a little bit further. As I said uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a link to a auction site. Um, this this car is going up for auction, and uh, all the benefits will go to the Kansas chapter of the Susan G. Komen Foundation. Um, I live in Kansas, and I wanted to help people in my area, and so this car is going to go up. Uh, as I said, I'll have a link to the uh, eBay site, and it's uh, the, the eBay benefits site. Um, so all the proceeds for this car are going to go directly to, they donate 100% of the profits to, uh, to Susan G. Komen. Um, so I'm not taking a dime out of this thing, um, doing this because I want to support the cause and raise awareness. Um, so definitely look for that link, and uh, if you're interested in this car, or if you're just interested in uh, supporting the foundation, go out and give a bid on it, uh, because it really, really turns out just beautiful. Um, but because I wanted to uh, donate this and, and do the auction with this, I definitely wanted to take it to a higher level than I normally would in a normal restoration. And so you can see the inside here, um, I'm working on some of the the details, getting some black highlights on the inside of the car. Um, most of this is not going to be visible once the car is assembled, but that sort of cockpit area where the driver sits, I knew you'd be able to see down in there. And so, again, I'm just using a little of my testers uh, flat black and painting out the inside of that driver's cockpit area. So we finished up uh, painting out the interior, um, and it, it's looking pretty nice. I think when this dries, it's really going to set off that uh, cockpit area for the driver. Um, and you can start to see some of the paint. Uh, this was really a uh, challenge, but a lot of fun. The, the pink uh, took about five layers to get it to where I wanted and get the right level of uh, sparkle in the translucency of that. Um, we got another about three or four coats of clear on top, but it turned out beautiful. On the base for this car, I tried something a little different, uh, something I've done in my model making uh, before but haven't used on a matchbox, and that was I coated this whole thing with a flat black layer. Uh, I knew I wanted at least the, the areas around the wheels and sort of that suspension undercarriage pieces. Um, I wanted to take those black, same with the motor, and uh, then I took a couple of cotton buds or cotton swabs with a little lacquer thinner on them and I went over and removed some of that paint from the areas of the base that I wanted to show off and highlight as metal. If you remember back to the early days of racing, a lot of times they would yank a seat out of a, an old B2 or, or B29 bombers. Uh, a lot of aircraft parts were used in the racing days and so kind of wanted to make that seat look like maybe it was an old aircraft seat that they dropped into that belly racer. And here we are ready for assembly. Um, so you can see the, the body here, uh, just beautiful, really super shiny. The, the gloss clear on that just came out perfect. Um, got a lot of nice metallic flake in that pink. The little driver uh, turned out really nice. Um, you can see all the little details in the, the forming and casting of that. Our wheels are perfect. Um, you'd, you'd look at these, you'd never know that they were originally yellow wheels, but uh, we have everything done, painted up. Everything in this is cured for a couple days now, and so we are ready to start reassembly. Now, when I was painting the wheels, I uh, typically I choose, you know, the best side of a wheel to put out, um, but in this case, I had to choose the best side before I painted because I only wanted to add that stripe just on the outside of the wheels. So I've kind of already gone through that and picked what I thought was the best side of each one of those wheels uh, so that I could put them out. Uh, to put the axles back on, I'm using Marty's method. Um, if you are unfamiliar with that, you can go check out his channel, Marty's Matchbox Makeovers, and he'll walk you through uh, how he uses his drill press to do that. I use the exact same method. Um, made a, a little set of dies for myself to mushroom out the ends of these. And uh, I find it difficult to video because my drill press shakes the hell out of my camera stand. So we've got the wheels, uh, or the axles back mushroomed, got our wheels back on. 
the dies I noticed did uh, tear up just a little bit of that black on the wheels. So I'm going to go in real quick and just uh, touch up some of those areas where a little bit of that uh, paint was rubbed off from the, the dies in that axle mushrooming process. I also want to paint out the ends of the axles in this case. Um, all of the historical photos I could find, you know, these shiny axle heads on this almost look like a hubcap in there. And all the racing wheels were just black on black on black. And so I, I want to try to stay somewhat true or, or historically accurate in this. And so I'm just going to go ahead and black out all of the axle ends there um, to really highlight and set off that pink stripe on the outside. So with our base finished up, we are ready for reassembly. Uh, so you can see our little driver dude fits in there really nice. Um, this particular casting is, is kind of unusual because the, the back end of the casting actually kind of hooks over the base and then it drops down into the post. Um, the driver has two little pegs on his arms that are held in by the upper part of the casting. And uh, this driver uh, is missing the steering wheel. It's, it's missing uh, part of those pegs, so um, he doesn't want to stay in completely on his own, and that's okay. Um, I've got enough flexibility in uh, the way this is assembled that I should be able to drop him in after we're all put back together. And it's, it's kind of um, kind of strange to, to get it in there. You gotta wiggle it kind of just right to get those little pins to, to drop down and sit correctly. But once you do, it's, it's really a pretty firm um, attachment. So I'm not too worried about that. So I've got my replacement set of wheels here in from Recover Toy. And as you can see, two of the wheels are uh, a narrower tire tread. Those are meant for the front of the car. And then two are a thicker uh, wheel tread. And those are meant for the back of the car. And when I tried these on, um, these particular, I don't, I don't know if it's my casting or if it's the tires that I got from Recover Toy. Um, I'm used to the tires being loose when they are original tires uh, going on to the, the older hubs. But usually my uh, replacement or aftermarket tires fit pretty tight. And in this case, um, where I was painting the hubs, I thought it might actually be a little bit of a struggle to get these uh, tires to fit nicely on the hub. And these were actually very, very loose. Um, and again, this was kind of concerning to me because this is a car that I want to put out for an auction. And I don't want uh, the wheels falling off of the hub. So in order to remedy that, I'm adding just a very, very small drop of super glue onto the hub. And something that I can kind of rotate that wheel around the hub, spread that glue around. Um, on these these ones that are particularly loose and hopefully that will hold it in place. And here you can really see the impact that little pink line has on the outside of the wheel hubs against the, the black wall tires behind it. I'm really happy with that. So rather than painting the Mustang base as it was, I decided to go ahead and polish it out and you can see the hubs, I've uh, restored those back used a, a little bit of my Molotow liquid chrome pen and a fine tip brush in order to highlight those wheels. I'd, I'd kind of gotten into them a little bit with my Dremel and had scratched off some of that finished chrome uh, trying to get the wheels removed. And so um, just used a little bit of the Molotow chrome and uh, touched up those areas on the wheels that were a little scratched up. Um, because I want to uh, take this uh, this body really up to the next notch. Um, I'm going to stick with the chrome. Usually I use my silver paint on these because I'm doing a restoration and trying to be true to what Lesney would have used. Um, and Lesney didn't use chrome. And so um, for, for this, because it's a custom and because this is going up for an auction as well, um, I really wanted to take it to another level. Uh, the paint on this casting was a lot of fun to do. Um, I actually painted this car about three different times, trying to find 
the right pink. Uh, the first time I did it in kind of a rose gold and it really turned out beautiful. The clear was beautiful and I set it down on the base and I'm looking at the gold flecks in the paint with the bright shiny chrome centers of the wheels and I knew it just didn't work. And so I stripped the car and I started over and I, I tried again a lighter pink loaded up with flakes similar to the first car that I did. And it, when I added the flake, it ended up kind of going gray on me and it just didn't look right. And so I stripped the car again um, and came back and I, I mixed, I mixed probably four or five different cups, just trying to find the right, the, the correct tone of a really rich, dark pink. And uh, this was the, the, color I came up with. Uh, it's kind of a, I guess a little bit of a mauve, um, but it's really, the, the color is really deep on this, nice and rich. I used a different metallic flake um, when I went back to this one. I actually used some of my um, airbrush paints and I ended up adding a little iced pearl and that doesn't generally affect the color of the base paint that you're adding it to. It just adds that sparkle effect in there. So this has uh, four coats of the dark pink and then two coats of the dark pink mixed with an ice pearl in it to, to really make it shiny and sparkle. And then I went ahead and I did uh, three coats of gloss clear on the top as well. And so you can see uh, painting in some of these details, the, the bumpers, the dash, some of the trim lines. You know, the, the Mustang is iconic because of this front grille. And if you don't get the front grille right, it just doesn't look like a Mustang. And so I knew I really had to nail this. There's a lot of nice little details in here too that I wanted to set off. Um, you can see we'll, uh, we'll paint up the headlights, the side marker lights. It's got a couple of the little racing lights that sit down um, off of the bumper. And uh, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to just chrome it and leave it either. I knew this was going to be a multi-step, multi-stage paint out on this. So the base coat of this is my Molotow Chrome. Um, on the front and the rear bumpers. And then uh, I had to set this aside for about a week to allow all of the chrome to dry and cure out. I've said this in some of my other videos. Uh, the Molotow is not a paint. It's an ink. And the drying time on it is just a lot longer than a lot of the other things that I, I work with uh, in doing these casting restorations. And so... I found that the, the best method with it is really just time. Um, I know a couple other restorers recently have been playing around with uh, trying to bake it to see if you can accelerate that a little bit. And that may be something that I try in the future. But for right now, I just wanted to try to have the patience that that I don't have um, and just set it aside and and let it sit for four or five days and cure out and uh, actually had really good results with that. So I did want to take a few minutes to talk about what is going to happen with this car. Um, so when I originally was uh, kind of clued into this Paint It Pink challenge, um, heard about it from Polly over at Fat Guy Productions. And if you don't know his channel, go check him out, search it on YouTube. Um, Polly does just some amazing diecast re uh, restoration work and I've definitely learned a lot from him, picked up some really valuable tips and tricks. 
And uh, he was the one that kind of clued me in on this and said, hey, we're going to do this. A whole bunch of channels are doing it. And uh, he talked about the the car that he was going to do and said that uh, he was going to put it up for auction. And I thought, gosh, what a neat idea. I wonder if I can help out or if there's something I can do. And so that's why I decided to do two cars. This car is going to actually head out to Las Vegas and be included as a part of Polly's auction for Fat Guy Productions. So uh, go check out his channel, subscribe, follow his link if you want a chance to own this car. The reassembly on the Mustang is fairly straightforward. As I said, I used Marty's method to mushroom my axles back. Um, this has a few more steps because of the steering component. I did go ahead and paint up the little steering knob that hangs out the side of the car. Um, I didn't want it, you know, the, the bright white plastic uh, contrasting against my painted pink. And so I went ahead and uh, painted it pink and did it in the same color as the body so that it, it kind of blends in, kind of goes away. Um, this little plastic suspension piece that's in there, you can see, uh, snaps right back in place. And to hold that in, I'm just probably going to use just a little dab of super glue here. Um, I think that's really all I'm going to need. Again, if you're really careful when you take them off, uh, you can make sure that you've got enough of that post left that when you want to go put it back together, a little bit of that flange is still in place and can hold on to that plastic. So a couple little dabs of super glue and our base is reassembled and ready to go. So we've got our race car fully assembled here and you can see it just turned out beautiful, but I did want to kick it up a notch. And so I did some hunting and I found these water transfers that are made for nail art um, or nail technicians. And they go on the same way and these were made for breast cancer awareness. And there was a whole bunch of different ones on the sheet and I thought, well, gosh, you know, I should be able to find something that can work. And again, I was trying to be true to what the original casting was. And this original casting had these little round numbers on it. And I didn't remove the casting marks that uh, showed where the, the decals were placed because I intended on replacing them with uh, something else. And when I came across these, uh, it was just about perfect for what I was trying to do. So uh, this little car, I'm going to call the Hope Racer. Uh, so the Hope Racer has the Hope logo um, on it and the, the black background, the little pink ribbons. And these go on just like any other water transfer. A uh, few minutes, uh, soak them. And uh, they're a little fiddly to, to catch in the, the tweezers when you're done. But... Uh, I usually find just a, a little bit, a, a little dab on the casting gives me a little bit of working time when I go to put it down. So I put a little dab of water there um, to be able to do that. And uh, it's really just like any other water transfer. Um, a little dab there to kind of press it down in place, squeeze some of that water out of the back side. And we've got our first decal done. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of these and then we'll be on to the next car.
Now, no true Hope Racer would be complete without that pink ribbon somewhere. Uh, the ribbon has become a, a really noticeable uh, symbol for breast cancer awareness, so I definitely wanted to have one on here somewhere and looked at a lot of different areas. Um, was lucky that the transfers that I ordered had a few different sizes that I could try out in different spots. And I think I like this area here at the back of the car the best. Um, so we'll trim up one of these transfers, get it to fit. Uh, one thing that's different on these is they are not, um, they're, they're not trimmed on the area of the paper. So the casting is whatever you cut it out. So you notice I've, I've cut these really pretty close to the ink. Um, because I didn't want a lot of that clear transfer around the outside. And uh, when I got this on, I was actually kind of disappointed with it um, because the pink ribbon on the pink car just kind of disappears, and I couldn't really see it. And so I uh, decided to go back and take a second look, um, and I've got a couple of the ribbons that are in the black, and I thought the black on the Hope logo, the black on the ribbon... Uh, that may actually kind of fit the car a little bit better. And so I uh, kind of made a judgment call to go ahead and swap it out for a black ribbon instead of the pink that wasn't very visible. So uh, this is the last little finishing touch on the Hope Racer was the ribbon logo. And uh, fit almost like it was made for this spot on the casting. So that is going to be the last transfer uh, to complete the Hope Racer. The Mustang I also wanted to kick up on a little bit with some decals, but here you can see uh, some of the detail work that I was able to do on this. The chrome on the bumpers just turned out beautiful. And uh, still want to go back in with some black and highlight the rear section as well as the front grille. Uh, but I can always do that after I get these decals on. I wanted to pick a, kind of a different theme for this car, and I really like this Faith, Hope, Love logo. Uh, that's uh, pretty common throughout a lot of the different events, and uh, it, it's really important um, both to, to families who have gone through this. Um, you'll know that uh, your faith gets tested and uh, hope seems lost. And the, the thing that kind of keeps you all together is your love. And so I uh, think I want to do a Faith, Hope, Love logo on the hood. Um, I also really like the Fight Like a Girl logo. And I think the Mustang has enough real estate that hopefully I can get both decals on there. So we're going to cut out one of, these, uh, one of these bigger ones for the hood. And we'll see if we can maybe fit that other one on the roof. We are ready for reassembly on the Mustang and to put the glass in, I'm going to use a little trick that I've seen a, a lot of the other restores use, and that is just a little dab of clear silicone down inside the casting. By the time you drill down on that roof post, a lot of the times, you know, enough to get the glass out, there's not much left of it. And so in order to get that glass to stay in place and, and hold, uh, the clear silicone works really, really well. I like to put a little dab on the back side, uh, almost as an adhesive, to 
hold it up against the casting and then another little drop right in the hole of the glass to, to almost form like a silicone rivet in it to hold it in place and uh, that should be enough on the interior you can see i've done this uh, very simply just uh, painted it out in a little flat black and chromed the steering wheel um, I did leave the tow hook in place because I wasn't sure if I was going to leave it or take it off. And after looking at the casting together, the tow hook just really looked out of place on this. And so I used my little nipper pliers there and just clipped that off. That'll go back in my, uh, my kit of parts and I might be able to use it on a future model. Uh, one that's missing the tow hook that I need to have uh, restored. And so um, the assembly you know for this is is pretty straightforward the interior drops in that little ring wants to fit around the post and had a heck of a time with this one getting it in there um, it's another reason to really let your paint cure out and dry before you you get to assembly on the base here you can see uh, we did a, a mirror polish shine on the bottom really turned out nice the, the wheels and tires restored back uh, look just beautiful and uh, this will get just snapped back into place and we'll use one of our M2 little button head screws. Um, I've done the paint match screws before, but on the polished base, I really like just using the straight chrome screw. And I, th I think that just looks nicer, it looks cleaner. And so uh, this one really, I, I'm very, very happy with how it turned out. Um, you can see I've had a chance to do the uh, the black detailing on the back here and I just wanted to add a little silver in where I cut off that tow hook uh, just so it kind of blends in to the rest of the bumper. So here is the reveal of the Hope Racer. Uh, this started out as a uh, blue matchbox uh, British race car. Uh, we were missing the wheels or missing the tires from the wheels um, and everything else about this casting was pretty standard except for the large amount of missing paint that was on the back. Um, this was a great candidate for a custom because there wasn't enough left of the original casting for me to really restore. And uh, in the Race for the Cure theme, I thought this was just the perfect casting to, to do up. Uh, very, very pleased with how this came out. The paint is just beautiful. I'm, I hope you can see the depth of the pink, the, the level of the sparkle and the metallic that comes out of it. Um, really, really beautiful. I think my favorite thing on this restoration, though, has to be the wheels. I really love how sharp the black wheels look against the black tire with that little pink line detail in there. And I think uh, if I do any more of these in the future, if I have any other uh, customs that I want to do, in this casting i'm going to have to do this same little trick because i just love how it looks the driver turned out really nice uh, you can see all of the little features um, in his face and, and in the the racing suit you can see the folds and the creases now that it's painted up and it's not just the white plastic and uh, i really am just very very tickled pink over how this little restoration um, and, and custom turned out. So if you love this car, um, the good news is you have the chance to own this car. I am gonna put a link down in the description for the auction site, for the auction posting, for where you can bid on this car. And uh, remember, you're not bidding for a matchbox. You, you're gonna get the matchbox, but uh, you're bidding for all of the people whose lives have been affected by breast cancer. So uh, as Polly says, bid with your heart and not your head on this one. Um, but I'm gonna give you the link to that description so you have a chance to own this car. And here we have the reveal of the Faith Hope Love Mustang. This little car just turned out amazing. Look at the front grill. I mean, that is that iconic, Mustang front end, uh, the, the little white details and the lights just totally set it off. The wheels, uh, the, the tires, everything getting back to that original shiny chrome and chroming out the bumpers and the door handles. Um, I mean, this little gem just turned out far, far better than I thought it was going to. Uh, the, the thing that I was surprised about in doing this was how much 
those little accents of black on the rear and in the front grille really set off all the rest of the details in the casting. And so I actually carried that over into the little vents behind the, the driver's passenger's doors as well. Um, I think that you know, black is, is oftentimes overlooked. And so uh, in this paint it pink challenge, sort of the, the trick I was surprised by and, and what I really enjoyed learning through this was how much uh, the black can be used to offset the pink and really showcase it. Uh, the paint on this, very, very happy with. This is a little more of a hot pink. I didn't want it, you know, little girl pink. I, I wanted it sort of a refined, um, more race serious, you know. Honestly, it, it needed to be a pink that fit a Mustang. Um, and so it, it took me a while to narrow in on this color and the right mix of the metallic and the pearls to get all of that shimmer and sparkle in there. Uh, but really, really pleased with how the paint turned out on this one. And if you think that this car is as awesome as I do and you want to make it a permanent part of your collection, the good news is you also have a chance to own this car. I'm going to put a, another link down in the description to the auction listing from Paul over at Fat Guy. Um, and I want you to go out and bid on his uh, listing as well because he's got several castings and a bunch of other goodies in there and I uh, want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to Paul uh, for tipping me off about this and uh, letting me uh, be a, a part of his build and uh, his listing as well. So definitely go out and uh, bid on that if you want to make this car and all those other goodies uh, a part of your collection as well. If you enjoyed this video, as always, give me a like down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. Share them below. I read all of them. And as always, join us next week for another Vintage Diecast Restoration.